Let me introduce you to a beast of a camera. When you hear the name Roliflex, you probably think about the famous Roliflex TLRs from back in the day. Or maybe the more affordable and therefore more accessible Rolicore TLR like I have here. But in this video, we're going to talk about a beast of a camera, which is the Roliflex SL66E. This camera was built between 1982 and 1992, and it was meant as a competitor to the Hasselblad 500 series. But there are some differences, and this camera has some distinct features that I would like to tell you about. But first of all, this is a camera and lens combination, also including a 250mm 5.6 telephoto, that I borrowed from my good friend Hans de Graaf at the Foto Fuckhuis in Haarlem. And I just finished shooting through a roll of Adox CHS 100. And if I've ever been curious about the results that I was able to achieve shooting square format, well, then this is the case. For more reasons than one, but primarily because of this interesting camera. I guess I've mentioned it before, Shooting square format is just really not my cup of tea. And I've been using the Hasselblad 500 series back in the day quite often. And I've never really enjoyed shooting a Hasselblad. I've never really enjoyed shooting square format. But this Roliflex just drew me in and created a buzz of excitement I could not resist. And I have never enjoyed shooting square format so much as with this camera. And for some odd reason, the compositions just came to me. So again, I'm very curious what kind of results I was able to achieve. But anyway, let's have a quick look at the camera. There are quite a lot of reviews on the SL66, so I don't want to go in too many details. You know, the main competitor was the Hasselblad 500 series, which is a leaf shutter camera. This is not. Even though Roliflex produced two lenses, an 80mm and 150mm leaf shutter lens. Those two lenses enable you to shoot at all available shutter speeds with regards to flash sync. All other lenses, like the standard 80mm 2.8, you can shoot at a sync speed of 1 30th of a second or below. So they did take that into account making those two extra lenses. What makes this camera so interesting with regards to features that a Hasselblad does not have? First of all, it has a bellows focusing, which means that you can get in extremely close to your subject. And that makes it especially interesting in combination with the fact that these are interchangeable lenses, of course. If you take this lens off, you can turn it around, position it back onto the camera, and use it for macro photography. And like I mentioned, especially in combination with the bellows, it's very interesting. Another feature that I haven't seen before is the fact that this lens mount has a tilt mechanism. So you can tilt the lens up or down by 8 degrees. So you have full control over an extended depth of field. Right, interesting features. It is a very heavy camera. That's something you need to take into account. It weighs almost 2 kilos with its standard 80mm 2.8. And it is a very large camera. So this camera, for probably 99% of the time, you're going to be using on a sturdy tripod. The waist level viewfinder, I think, personally, is fantastic. It is extremely clear, and it has a split focusing screen, enabling you to pinpoint focus on your subject. I really enjoyed using this viewfinder, waist level viewfinder. Besides that, it has an interchangeable back. You can load and unload your film by taking the back all the way off the camera or by just opening the back of the camera and keep the film magazine on the camera. That's also interesting. 
There are 120 and 220 capabilities in this film back and also 6x45. Numerous viewfinders available and interchangeable focusing screens, interchangeable lenses, there's a whole list of lenses available and it's just a very high build quality. It's not the cheapest camera. These SL66E cameras, including a standard 80mm 2.8, will set you back somewhere between 1800 and 2000 euros. But anyway, if you can afford it, buy it. It is an absolute gem to photograph with. And like I was mentioning, it just drew me in and really excited me to shoot in square format. Well, that's all I wanted to tell you. I'm very excited. Now I'm going to show you the photos that I was able to achieve on this Adox CHS 100. Here it is. I just shot through the roll and here are the results of the development and scanning by Hans de Graaf at the Foto Fakhuis. If you're interested in purchasing this camera, you can contact Hans at the Foto Fakhuis and he'll give you a quote and if you have the money I would buy it because it is in perfect working condition. Thanks for watching, greatly appreciate it. This is the first part of four rolls of film Adox CHS 102 that we're shooting through. This one was done with the Roliflex and I hope you enjoy the results and I look forward to seeing you back again in part two of a series of four. Thanks again. Bye-bye.